sentiment on the Wall Street turned sore on a Wednesday in the light of a Jerome Powell's hawkish testimony. Still, the futures market is in a new hurry to revise bets on a Fed's rate hikes. The benchmark stock indexes closed yesterday on a pessimistic note. The New York station was a gloomy on Wednesday. Apart from a hawkish Jerome Powell, the major stock indexes were driven down by high-tech giants. The mixture of a Fed's hawkish prospects and revision of ratings affected the three indexes. The Dow Jones sank by 102 points, or 0.3 percent. The Nasdaq showed the weakest performance and tumbled by 1.2 percent. The S&P lost 0.52 percent to close at 4,365. The stock indexes extended their losses in the New York pre-market and the S&P 500 is expected to trade in the intraday Canada between 4,300 and 4,410 points. Wall Street indexes closed in the red yesterday because Powell's congressional testimony confirmed the central bank's goal to tame inflation. The three indexes incurred losses for the three days straight. The most damage came from a companies with the largest market value and related to artificial intelligence. In the testimony on a Capitol Hill, Jerome Powell confirmed the central bank's commitment to bring inflation down to the target level of 2%. Powell said we don't use the world pose and um, I wouldn't use it here today. The outlook for the two more rate hikes um, by the end of the year included in the Fed's assessment roundup of economic forecast reveals pretty good suggestions that the economy, if the economy performs about um, as expected. The dependence on the data, in turn, was pointed out by Chicago Fed President Austin Colesbury, who said that, in his opinion, the central bank is in a wait-and-see mode as the new data becomes available. If you do not see progress, this is the answer. If you see progress, this is also the answer, he concluded. Meanwhile, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic became the first policymaker to suggest that the Fed would have to wait at least after the July meeting to decide whether to raise interest rates further, because acting too quickly at this point might drain the economy. If we just push for more rate hikes, we could unnecessarily uh, be, deprive the economy of a too much momentum, Bostic said. Despite Bostic's statement, the Fed's uh, overall sentiment remains hawkish. In this context of the 11 major sectors of the S&P 500, energy stocks led gains, rebounding from uh, the biggest intraday drop in a modern immense. The telecom sector and services were the hardest hit. Tesla, along with the AI-related stocks like Microsoft and NVIDIA, has been the biggest drag on the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. Tesla shares slumped by 5.5% after Barclays downgraded their stock to Aquil from an overwide, saying the electric car maker recent rally was a too sharp compared to the fundamentals. Chips have had a big impact on the tech stocks. The Philadelphia Semiconductor Index fell by 2.7 percent, the biggest intraday drop this month. Futures for U.S. stock indexes continued to decline on Thursday, while investors expected the second day of a power speech before the Senate committee. At the same time, Powell's hawkish rhetoric did not convince everyone. Futures markets still do not believe in two more rate hikes, but the Fed has been successful in dampening hopes of any significant easing. At least until the year end, market quotes now suggest that the July increase will not be fully reversed until March. 
Both the Fed's leader and the number of Fed speakers have pointed to data dependence and the strong labor market, so fresh data on the jobless claims is encouraging and may support Wall Street. The number of Americans who filed for unemployment benefits was a 264,000 last week above market expectations and in line with the previous week's upgraded figure. The figure was the highest since October 2021. Potentially, the stability of such reading, uh, readings may indicate a waning tension in the labor market and that the Fed's aggressive policy moves have begun to affect employment. In addition to the job market news and the second day of a power's testimony, investors will also be looking at the U.S. existing home sales, as well as the comments from a three Fed politicians after the opening bell. As for individual companies, with the exception of Tesla, the leading mega caps in the pre-market were able to turn towards recovery. At the same time, aircraft manufacturer Boeing lost 1.3% in the pre-market, as the parts supplier said it would suspend production due to a worker strike. The currency market is digesting the news from the central banks and the US dollar index rebounded in the pre-market and looked a 0.1% uptick. The index recovered to 102.20. The interdecade of the instrument is seen between 101.70 and 102.40. Major central banks are due to announce their policy decision this week, and the Bank of England held uh, its meeting today in light of the fresh inflation data. The regulator raised the key interest rate by 50 basis points, defined the forecast for a modest rate hike by 25 basis points. The pound sterling has advanced by 4% this quarter amid expectations for further rate hikes. The pound uh, slipped uh, by 0.25% versus the greenback in response to the Bank of England's policy decision today. In addition, the Swiss National Bank increased rates by 25 basis points today, as expected, but also left the door open for further tightening. Norway's central bank surprised with an aggressive rate hike by a half of a percentage point and signaled a new move in August. The decline of the euro and the pound slightly supported the growth of the dollar index. But even taking into account Powell's hawkish statements, the index continued to stagnate at the, the lows. This dollar reaction can be explained by the fact that Powell's testimony does not shed a new light on the Fed's forward guidance and his tone was very similar to last week's press conference. The background is not the best for the dollar, given the latest data on unemployment benefits, but the day may bring support to the index in particular from the Fed speakers and the data on existing home sales. The Canadian dollar is flexing its muscles because of its strong faith in the Bank of Canada. The USD card pays a trading flat at about 1.3160 inside the interdecade between 1.3140 and 1.3210. The Looney reinforced to strongest level in nine months against its American rival because oil prices grew in a Wednesday. Canada's better than expected retail sales cemented expectations for another rate hike by the Bank of Canada. Retail sales in Canada rose by 1.1% in April, much stronger than the median forecast of 0.2%. They are likely to grow again in May. The data confirms that the purchasing power of Canadian consumers remains robust in the face of a tightening economy. Besides, the minutes released on Wednesday showed that the Bank of Canada agreed that the need for further rate increases would be determined by incoming economic data. Members believe that uh, with the household spending rising again, improving consumer confidence and slowing disinflation, Monetary policy did not appear to be sufficiently restrictive, the minutes said. 
The policymakers agreed to assess the need for further increases in the policy rate based on the data that comes in. The bank was concerned that inflation could be stuck at levels well above the official target of 2%. Following the publication of the minutes, markets increased the likelihood of a rate hike by another 25 basis points at the next meeting to 72%. Prior to publication, the probability was 64%. This in the hawkish mood of the Bank of Canada helped the loony offset the negative from another into the drop in the oil prices. Both benchmarks lost about 3% before the opening bell today. Meanwhile, the crypto market is again in the ground uh, and focusing on a positive news. The tokens are cooling down after the rapid rally on Wednesday, trying to consolidate their gains. Some assets are trading higher. Bitcoin surged to, to $30,435 yesterday. Then investors rushed to fix profits. The crypto was trading at about $30,000 in the early American trade, 0.26% up from yesterday's closing price. The asset has jumped by 20% in the last seven days. Popular altcoins are trading mixed. Ethereum, Solano, Ripple, Binance, Litecoin and Cardano are wavering between dips of 1.3% and gains of 2.8%. At the present, the ETF hype provides the market with its support. Cryptocurrency fund manager Valkyria has joined the race for a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund amid a search in institutional interests following in the footsteps of its competitors. On June 21, Valkyria fields a re registration of form with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. It plans to list on the Nasdaq under the symbol BRRR. New hope for a, a licensed spot Bitcoin ETF is the digital currency's great accumulation race. Buying Bitcoin before an ATF goes public has been compared to buying shares before an IPO. In addition, the crypto world continues to closely monitor the confrontation between Binance and the Securities and Exchange Commission. As it became known from a court documents, the Commission has no evidence that the exchange withdrew customer funds to offshore accounts. This was established in the court and now Binance intends to sue the Commission for misinformation. Sentiment among crypto investors has improved. In turn, digital assets help regain the footing. As for the trading prospects of a Bitcoin, it may continue to consolidate within the range of 29,600 to 30,450. Going beyond the range can lead the crypto either to a correctional 28,700 or to an increase to $31,000. Thank you for watching. We closely monitor the markets and provide you with the up-to-date financial information and analysis. We are waiting for your questions and comments down below. Subscribe to our channel and see you online tomorrow.